Here's what's coming up on Network Africa. Burkina Faso military junta Ibrahim Traore says security services foiled coup attempt. Miami residents react to the withdrawal of French ambassador to Niger, calls it a step in the right direction. Plus, South Sudan's President Salva Kiir in Russia for talks with President Vladimir Putin. Glad to have you join us on today's edition of Network Africa on Channels Television. I'm Anne Mwawadu. We begin with news coming out of Burkina Faso, where there seems to be rumor of a coup attempt. Well, earlier this week, allegations of a brewing mutiny led hundreds of people to take to the streets in the capital, Ouagadougou, in support of the junta. But the country's military leader and interim president, Captain Ibrahim Traore, has come out to debunk the coup allegations, indicating the security and intelligence services foiled the attempted military takeover. According to the statement read on national television, the junta was quoted as saying, unnamed military officers and others had planned to destabilize Burkina Faso. They had the dark intention of attacking the institutions of the Republic and plunging our country in chaos. It adds that four army officers have been arrested following this incident and that two officers are on the run. Other well, EOA's Mohammed Yusuf joins us now for more on this. Hello, Mohammed. It's good to have you on Network Africa. Hello there. Uh, what more can you tell us about this foiled coup attempt? We know that investigations are already ongoing. According to the report, different um, security is saying that four uh, soldiers have been arrested, two are on the run. And, uh, and this uh, coup attempt this week um, comes at a, at a time that uh, the military junta in, led by Captain Ibrahim Traore is about to celebrate one year since it came to power through, of course, a uh, coup back in September 2022. And uh, after that, we, because of the rumours and what was going on behind the scenes and that tension, uh, the the population, the public came out in, in support of 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 the of uh, Captain Ibrahim uh, military administration, but uh, so far the country is is calm and and uh, the investigation, as you say, is on, is ongoing and uh, there's no further much to say uh, as it is at the moment. You've said the country is calm, but what's the mood at the moment? Because we understand that earlier people took to the streets to support the ruling junta. Yeah, generally the country is calm uh, after coming out to support uh, the, the current admin military administration. But uh, as it, this is a big gain or a plus for 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 the for the administration, because we all know that uh, the the uh, they are saying that they are coming to secure the country and 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 stabilize the country. That is something that hasn't worked, and. Uh, and we know the violence still continues. For example, um, about 6,000 6, schools have closed. Um, that is according to the UN agencies, UNHCR, UNICEF, and the Norwegian Refugee Council. So the situation hasn't changed according to what the promises they have given since taking power by force back in 2022. So there have been fears that uh, maybe the public will not be happy. But them coming out to support that administration, the military kind of feel energized and, and know that in the coming days when they will be celebrating, one year in power, they have something to celebrate and um, by backing up on what actually uh, happened on Tuesday by the people coming out. Mohamed, it's only been just one year since the interim president Ibrahim Chari seized power. Do we know the aim of the school attempt or where it's coming from in the first place? The 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 military administration hasn't given much reasons or the people, the faces behind it. We, we don't know the names. If those names are provided, we could have known what kind of ranks they were in or what whether they were helping uh, Ibrahim Traore to come to power back in September 2022. So we don't have those details at the moment. But what has really happened over the years and, and coups, we know that people give several reasons, like Traore gave reason of security, insecurity that is, take, that is engulfing the country. 
And and for them, we know some have said that we're going to transition um, to a civilian rule and those promises haven't been coming. But uh, in this case, according to reports of some experts, it's just in a way to shorten the duration of, of the military regime. And we know that it's just eight months. Um, it was another January uh, back in 2022 when there was a coup and uh, eight months later, uh, Captain Traore took power in January 22. We know that uh, the the, the uh, military, the commander, uh, the Miba was uh, actually he overthrew a democratically elected uh, government uh, by the president, uh, Mark Roche, and, and all, all of Kabore, Mark Roche Kabore. So all of that is just in a way, as it is now, is just to shorten um, that uh, duration of this current uh, regime. And we know some military officers have been arrested while some are on the run, but have there been any signs of rebellion in the military so far or maybe another plan to topple the ruling junta? What's the mood in the military? According to uh, a French uh, magazine, Jeune Afrique, um, they, they published a report that there was discontent, there was a tension within the military, and we know that the military administration, uh, they were not happy with it and, and they banned the paper. So this came at a time also, and 24 hours later, the, 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 the military is, is also announcing an attempted coup. So it, it, that tension will be there uh, because the situation hasn't changed um, in, in the ground in the country generally on what the the current administration, military administration, has promised. And anyone else will, of course, try uh, to get to power um, uh, as much as they can. But uh, it also appears that uh, they, there's no much consequences. We've seen uh, coups taking place in, in that region, and uh, there have been no much consequences. There have been sanctions. There have been a course attempt, for example, to take, up, to take up Niger. That hasn't happened. And this kind of, if th there's no reactions from the international, regional, even if it's Africa, mm -hmm. Even from the neighboring countries, these kind of movements kind of emboldens em, em um, some military men to continue this kind of coup. And according to many experts, this kind of coups uh, may come. We don't know what plans uh, Traore has uh, to get to get power and get that power seriously and to continue with that rule. We know that come around July, is, we expect a civil year transition in next year, 2024 July. We don't know, but with this consequence, what happened this week? Will there be another attempt by the administration to say there's more to happen and they may push? We've seen uh, this kind of uh, uh, promises being uh, not taken over or not being serious with it. And maybe Traore will talk also that route that we've seen uh, taking place, for example, in, in Sudan. All right, I guess, Mohammed, time will tell. Thank you very much, VOA's Mohammed Yusuf, for your time and the update on Network Africa. Well, it's no news that France's ambassador to Niger has left the country yesterday after the military junta ordered his expulsion. Some Niamey residents have been reacting to this move. They say they are proud that we're looking forward to French troops leaving the country as well. For Nigerian President Yacouba Abdou, the departure is a very big step. He says in his words, this shows us that the Nigerian authorities and the Niger Nigerian people are determined to ensure that the French leave Nigerian territory. While others are saying that this is not a complete victory yet until others leave the country. Relations between Niger and France, its former colonial ruler, which maintained a military presence in the country to help fight Islamist insurgents, have broken down since the army officers seized power in Niamey in the month of July this year. Meanwhile, the United States is hinting that France's decision to pull its troops out of Niger does not change Washington's posture in Niger Republic. And this is coming after French President Emmanuel Macron said 1,500 troops will be withdrawn out of Niger Republic by the end of this year. It does not change um, uh, our posture. I, I will say that the secretary did meet on Friday with members of uh, with ECOWAS member states um, to discuss the political crisis in Niger. Um, we continue to call for uh, the National Council for the Safeguarding uh, of the Homeland to release President Bazoum and his family uh, and all the other members of his government who have been unlawfully detained um, uh, and to take steps to restore democracy in the country. 
people are leaving South Sudan. Now a president, Salva Kiir, is in the Russian capital, Moscow, for a meeting with presidents of Vladimir Putin. According to a statement from the president's office, Mr. Kiir is in talks and he will focus on prospects for the development of bilateral relations in various areas, as well as regional and international issues. The visit, which aims at strengthening diplomatic ties on areas of trade, investment opportunities, and of course security, will have both leaders discuss the lifting of an arms embargo, targeted sanctions imposed on individuals in South Sudan. The trip to Moscow is coming at a time when Russia and Western powers are already trying to woo African support in the wake of the invasion of Ukraine. And as Liberia prepares to hold its elections next month, the United States is announcing that it will impose visa restrictions on anyone who undermines the polls. Although the U.S. did not name any specific individual, it said the visa ban will target those undermining democracy in Liberia, including through manipulation, rigging of electoral process, use of violence or engagement in any other activity designed to improperly influence the outcome of an election. The State Department noted that the policy reflected a commitment to support Liberians in their di desire to have a free and fair vote. Liberia's President George Weir, who is seeking a second term in office, will face opposition leader Joseph Bukai again, whom he defeated five years ago in the last election. Time, the United States Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, has wrapped up his African tour in Angola, saying the success of Africa is crucial to the future of everyone. Mr. Austin reiterated the U.S.'s commitment to helping Africa advance its security, as well as calling for equal partnership. It matters profoundly to the shape of the 21st century world. And it matters for our common prosperity and our shared security. And Africa also matters deeply to the United States and to my boss, President Biden. And I can tell you firsthand that the president believes that Africa's success is crucial to all of our futures. The United States is deeply committed to making sure that Africa enjoys all of the protections of the international rules and norms that advance security and prosperity. You know, other countries may see African countries as proxies or even pawns. And the chairman of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NITCOM, Honorable Abike Dabiri Arewa, has congratulated two Nigerian Americans on their recognition by U.S. President Joe Biden. And this is coming after Chinenye Ogumike and Osage Imasoje were nominated into the Advisory Council on Africa Diaspora Engagement by President Biden. The statements issued by the Commission's Head of Media and Public Relations, Abdul Rahman Balogun, said the nomination of the two great Nigerians into the advisory council is a welcome development. Mrs. Dabiri Arewa, on her part, said their recognition and appointments into the 12-member advisory council is a motivation for other Nigerians and Africans in general. Morocco is grateful for the assistance and aid relief it has received after a devastating earthquake hit the country earlier this month. The country's ambassador to the United Nations, Omar Hilali, thanked the world leaders for their show of support in a speech at the United Nations General Assembly in New York. The 6.8 magnitude earthquake led to deaths of about 3,000 people, leaving 5,700 more injured. It also caused grave material losses, but children are now returning to schools with the help of local officials. Still to come in just a moment, hundreds of Orthodox Christians gather to celebrate annual Maskell Festival all in Ethiopia. We'll bring you the details of this in just a moment. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Johannesburg police in South Africa have launched a manhunt for more suspects linked to yesterday's cash-in-transit heist in Springs. A police are saying the group of heavily armed men ambushed a car van, disarming security guards and burning the vehicle in the process. The men were eventually traced and cornered in the, on the M1 South as three hours after that 
crime. A shootout ensued and one robber was killed during the exchange of fire with the police. Also, one police officer sustained a gunshot wound and is now recovering in hospital. Meanwhile, Acting National Commissioner for the South African Police Service, Lieutenant General Tabelo Musakili, has praised the Guateng Watang police for their rapid response and tracing and apprehending the suspects. Once it has took place at uh, 5 o'clock on Wednesday in Springs when armed suspects forced a cash van to come to a halt. The security guards had just picked up money from various outlets and were on their way back to their base when they were disarmed and the cash van bombed. Suspects got away with an undisclosed amount of money. Gauteng police immediately operationalized information and maximum resources were mobilized. Vigilant members attached to the Hawks and the Johannesburg Flying Squad traced the suspect just after 8 o'clock on the M1 South, just before the Boysons of Ramp. A shootout ensued with the suspects who were traveling in a Toyota Quantum. One suspect was certified dead at the scene, while two others were apprehended. Three rifles were recovered. Cash and two cell phones have been seized. Two empty cash bags, as well as implements used in armed robberies, were found in their getaway vehicle. A manhunt is still underway for the remaining suspects. During the shootout, one police officer sustained a gunshot wound and is recovering in hospital. Well done to the team for the swift reaction. We continue to deal with violent crime in various provinces. We continue to take down syndicates and groups involved in these crimes, especially cash and transit heists. Either they surrender or we will continue to hunt and take them down. A speedy recovery to our member who is in hospital. In the past week alone, police have arrested 10,158 suspects for various crimes ranging from murder and armed robberies. Operation Chanela continues to register commendable progress since its inception on the 8th of May this year. 155,970 suspects have been arrested. And staying in South Africa, the National Directorate of Animal Health has officially announced Namibia's decision to prohibit importation of poultry as South Africa faces a severe avian flu crisis. And this prohibition encompassed live poultry, avian species and all poultry-related products. The avian flu outbreak in South Africa has dealt a significant blow to the poultry industry, resulting in the culling of millions of broilers to date. Meanwhile, grocery stores are also experiencing shortage of chicken and eggs. The new H7N6 train, primarily prevalent in Guateng, is a particular concern and the Chief Director of Animal Production and Health has highlighted that Namibia's action aims to curb the spread of this disease. South African anti-apartheid struggle veteran Aziz Bahad has died. His family announced his demise in a statement where he was said to have passed away at his residence in Johannesburg on Wednesday evening. He was aged 82. In a tribute, the family described him as a patriot and a freedom fighter who dedicated his life to the governing of ANC party and serving all South Africans. Mr. Bahad joined the struggle against apartheid rule from a very young age. Well, it's culture time and not even the conflict in Ethiopia's Amhara region called Hinda this year's celebrations. Hundreds of Ethiopian Orthodox Christians gathered to celebrate the annual Maskel Festival, which is a national holiday that marks the moment when the 4th century Roman Empress St. Helena found Christ's cross in Jerusalem. In a speech to address this event, Ethiopian Orthodox Bishop Abuna Ibrahim called for peace and equality amid the ongoing clashes between the government forces and the local militias in the Amhara region. The celebration ended with a traditional burning of a large firewood bonfire and yellow daisies on top representing the revelation that led Empress Helena to finding the cross.
Thousands of Muslims gathered in the Tunisian city of Kairouan to celebrate Maulid al-Nabi, also known as the birth of Islam's prophet Muhammad. The gathering also witnessed an influx of visitors to partake in this religious occasion. Music, 3D mapping shows were all part of festivities in the city, which holds its historical significance as one of the North as one of North Africa's principal holy cities. The celebration is an annual one by Muslims across the world on the 12th day of Arabi al-Awal, the third month in the Islamic calendar, marking the birth of Prophet Muhammad, who was born in Makkah in Saudi Arabia in 570 AD. And finally, on Network Africa today, unable to afford a flight out of his own native Guinea, but determined to study Islamic theology at an elite school, Mamadou Barry drew a map of Africa in his spiral notebook, and then he set off towards Egypt on a second-hand mountain bike, carrying only a change of clothes, a flashlight, and a screwdriver. Well, this report takes us on a journey with Mamdu in his own quest to acquire financial support for his dream education. Thousands of West Africans like Barry undertake risky journeys across the Sahara each year, searching for better living conditions and economic opportunities. But many never make it. Data from the International Organization for Migration shows that nearly 500 people died or disappeared on West African immigration on West African migration routes last year. Barry decided the risk was worth the reward. I had to fight, he said last month in Chad. That's why I decided to take up cycling. Covering approximately 100 kilometers each day, Barry cycled through Mali, Burkina Faso, Togo, Benin and Niger before stalling in N'Djamena, the capital of Chad, shaking from his planned routes by the ongoing conflict in Sudan. He was arrested three times along the way, twice in Burkina Faso and once in Togo, where security forces held him for nine days without charge before releasing him in exchange for 35,000 francs, an equivalent of 56.35 US dollars. That was everything he had saved for the rest of his journey. After that, he often slept in the bush for fear of coming to harm. Barry's luck changed in Chad after a local philanthropist who read about his journey online offered to fly him directly to Egypt and bypass Sudan's conflict zones. If you have a dream, all things you have to do, you have to follow this dream, to go on, on its way, because that's what will help you. To say that today I'm doing this, tomorrow this, no. You will never see a good road. But if you have dream, rest on it and be strong on it. But if you, you are on it, God will help you. He arrived in Cairo on September the 5th and got a full scholarship to Al-Azhar days later. These days, Barry's dream is a bit bigger. Yeah, I dream after that to be a, one of the biggest scholar, scholars in, in the world, the biggest ulama in the world. I want to be more than Sheikh al -Azhar. I want to be more than him, to know more than him. He wants to return to Guinea, armed with this knowledge, when his studies are complete, to spread the faith that has taken him so far from home. Four months and seven countries after starting his bike around Africa, Mamadou Barry, who's 25 years old, is in Cairo with a full scholarship to Al-Azhar University, one of the world's oldest and most renowned Sunni learning institutions. Well, what do they say? They say it's never too late to focus on your dreams, and if you can dream it, then you can achieve it. On that note, we end Network Africa for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Wawadu.